Welcome back. We're continuing on our eight five notes. We're now on question nine. And this is where this gets a little bit more, hmm, I'm gonna go with spicy. Spice is a good word. So we have this beautiful trinomial. One, two, three pieces long. So let's continue with the strategy we've been using. Notice I don't see plus plus. I don't see negative first and then plus like I was seeing in the previous ones. I'm seeing plus and then negative. Plus and then negative. I wonder if these make it so different. Let's see. First, put an M over the last term and list the factors of three. Well, that's it, folks. The only factors of three are one and three. And those do not add to give you two. They subtract to give you two. So I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to give me three, but subtract to give me two. Let me say that one more time. I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to give me three that subtract to give me two. So two numbers that multiply to give me three, well specifically negative three, and multiply and, and subtract to give you a positive two. Well, it looks like this is reasonable. This could definitely work. Hmm, let's see. Let's go ahead and set up our parentheses. Take this nice and slow. Again, this is where some teachers would use the X method. Not a bad method. I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to give me negative three and combine to give me a positive two. It's like a mystery. It's like, you know, discovery, the, the channel, the ID channel, which is my favorite channel. You're solving a crime. So think of two numbers that multiply to give me negative three and the same two numbers have to combine to give me a positive two. So this is what I do. I first tackle the front term because that's easy breezy. X times X is definitely X squared. And I know that the only factors that multiply to give me three has to be one and three, three and one. Go ahead and put them down. I'm gonna do the three first and then the one. The three and the one, the order doesn't matter, but the signs that you put with them definitely matter. So, hmm, I'm wanting to get a positive two. Hmm, let's see what happens if I put a negative here and then a positive. Let's see if that works. Negative three times a positive one is negative three. That makes sense. X times X is X squared. And let's see the middle. Negative three X, positive one X. I would get negative two X in the middle. Womp, womp, womp. That is inaccurate. We have a positive two in the middle. So we realize we need to turn our signs around. The three should be positive, and the one should be negative. Let's retry. X times X, X squared. Check. Positive three times negative one. Negative three. Check. Three X and negative one X is a positive two X. Bingo, that's my answer. So it has to be X plus three and an X minus one. Yes, the signs matter, who they are with. If they're with the wrong signs, it is incorrect. This is my correct answer. Miss Miller, could I have the X plus three second and the X minus one first? Definitely. Let's go to the next one. So I'm listing all the factors of 16. One and 16, we have two and eight, we have four and four. I wanna know which two numbers subtract to give me six. Well, it has to be two and and eight. They do subtract to give me six, and I want a positive six. So if I subtract and I have positive left over, I must have started with more positives. So let me say that one more time. If I subtract and get a positive answer, well, I must have started with more positives in the beginning. So here we go. We have r times r is the r squared in the front. That's not too shabby. We know it's two and eight. You can put them in whatever order you want, two and eight if you want or eight and two, doesn't matter. Now I'm trying to think of not only two numbers that multiply to give me the 16, but they do need to subtract to give me a positive six. So let's see what we got. Now you could FOIL this out, make sure it works. R times R is R squared. Negative two times positive eight, that negative 16 at the end. And let's check our middle term. And we got it. 
So this is our final answer. Let's move on to number 11 and 12. And then we'll be done with this little set. I'm thinking of all the factors of 18. 1 and 18, 2 and 9. And I'm trying to think, hmm, which one of these groups not only multiplies to give me 18, but subtracts to give me the 7? Hmm. Well, these two, when subtracted, would give you a version of 7. I need positive 7, though. So that means my 9 must be positive and my 2 must be negative. Negative 2 times positive 9 is that negative 18. Negative 2 and 9 positives would give me a positive 7 in the middle. So here we go. We have n times n is n squared, positive 9, and negative 2. And if you don't believe me, this is where you're going to multiply it out, or just double check your answer real quick. Here we go. n times n is n squared. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. And the middle, that's positive 9n minus 2n. Does that give me the 7n that I have? Yes, it does. Final answer is right there. You could have the n minus 2 first and the n plus I mean, excuse me, the n minus 2 first and the n plus 9 second. Last one. Now, this one's a little bit tricky for the visual learner in the group, a.k.a. myself. I like to put the invisible one that's sitting there so my brain can see it. So, I'm thinking of factors of 6. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Not very many factors. So, here's my numbers that multiply to give me the 6. Which group subtracts to give me a positive 1? That's the group. So b times b gives me the b squared. I know it's 2 and 3. But I need those two numbers to multiply to get a negative 6 and combine to give me a positive 1. The only way that's possible is if the 3 is positive and the 2 is negative. And if you don't believe me, again, let's check. b times b is b squared. Negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. And the middle terms, let's give them a little check. 1b in the middle, got it. So we now just finished 9, 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to stop the video here, and we're going to do the last four.